Right now on Connecticut's news station, the suspect in a killing in our state and a stabbing spray in Massachusetts said to make his first court appearance today. The latest from police. And cracking down on gun violence in Bridgeport, the mayor and the governor are meeting this morning to address all of the shootings there over the long holiday weekend. And a local tax preparer is no more. The reason why a federal court is forcing multiple businesses to shut down. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good Tuesday morning. Thanks for waking up with us. Hopefully everybody had a great long weekend. We're glad you're starting your new day off with us, America Areas. And I'm Keith McGilvery and for Tim, grateful you're here as we get started on a Tuesday. Want to check on your forecast. Meteorologist Matt Scott standing by and you say, my friend, the sun coming back out. Yes, it would be a nice change of pace after yesterday, which was a little lacking in the weather department. Yeah. yeah. We did so well to start the holiday weekend, unfortunately finishing it. Yesterday, yeah, as Eric just said, the rest of the weekend was was really good. Uh, yesterday, ending out with a couple of thunderstorms. They're out. Still have a little fog to deal with, some low clouds. I'll show you the visibility in a moment, but more sunshine today, and that's going to equal more heat, more temperatures, uh, more warm numbers on the thermometer. Rain does return in the seven day. We'll talk about the weekend as well, because at 6.01 on a Tuesday, let's talk about the weekend. Here's your visibility. Can't see much in Naugatuck Valley again this morning, but a mile and a half is not bad. This is not great, though, along the shoreline. Quarter mile in Bridgeport, zero in New Haven, quarter mile in Groton. So uh, standby road warriors on I-95 for that. Flow is still out of the south. We are clearing out the skies. I'll expand the view, show you where the thunder boomers from last night are. They're well out to sea. Uh, just a little rain left over in the Cape, right by the arm. That's it. Looking off to the west, we're looking good to go. Temperature-wise, it's warm. It's still a little humid when you look at dew points that are still up there. 68 in Hartford, 67 in New Haven, 63 in Groton with uh, numbers that are going to be uh, nice today. Later on, getting back to 80. We'll take that. A couple of degrees above normal. Numbers kind of all over the place last couple of days. They've been really up. They've been down. We'll talk about where they're going to shake out for the rest of the week coming up in a few minutes. Let's see what's shaking on the roads. Good morning, Symphony Privet. Nope. Oh, Rachel. no. She's Right, Rachel. I am so. Listen, <laughs> I'm back. Number one, you I'm were back. here yesterday. Number I two, know. I haven't in seen fairness. you in a month, so I, mm -hmm. I, I, I forgot your name. Sorry. That's okay. So That's all right. Little, I'll, I could be symphony for the day. Put, That's put cool. Put a little name tag on you. We'll be good by eight o'clock. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Six oh two right now, and I even walked by you. I in know. The studio. You I'm, I'm, I'm you not did. proud of this. Yeah. All yeah. right. We'll work on it. Uh, <laughs> we'll get it right at six thirty, maybe. Uh, things are running smoothly out on the board, uh, out on the roads for the most part. 91, 95. We didn't have any road work that was wrapping up either, so things are looking pretty good, although we have some areas of fog along 95 this morning, so that may slow you down just a bit. A live look outside over in New Haven, both directions of 95. We have light volume, but again, patchy dense fog about a quarter mile or so in that direction. Over in Old Lyme, 95, both directions, light volume there. We'll take a look at your drive times to the state lines. New Haven to New York is smooth at 52 minutes. Waterbury to New York is a 57 minute drive. Keith and Erica. Good morning. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning to you. 603 in this morning, the Massachusetts man accused of killing a person in Connecticut, then going on a stabbing spree south of Boston, expected to appear in court for some of the charges. Yeah, so far, 26 year old Jared Raviza has only been charged in the one of the incidents there, but that could be changing soon. Fox CC one's Brooke Griffin is live in Deep River with a look at this morning. He has, she has the latest. Well, Jared Revisa has been held in jail up in Plymouth since Saturday. Now he is, of course, being held without bail. And at this point today is going to begin what will likely be a pretty long slew of court appearances for him as he faces a long list of charges over the next weeks and months. But today specifically, he's going to be up in a Plymouth courtroom facing a judge for a few different charges, very specifically assault with intent to murder and also assault with a deadly weapon. So he's not been charged in the other crimes yet, just these few in Plymouth. But the timeline of events spans over two different states. It started back on Saturday afternoon here in Deep River when police were called to a home listed online as a short term rental. Police say when they arrived, they found a person dead, but there's no word on who that person is or how they died. Connecticut State Police have not named Revisa as a suspect. We have that information, though, from Massachusetts State Police. Investigation 
investigators say they say they're say that Revisa left Deep River and drove to Braintree, Massachusetts. This is where he allegedly walked into a movie theater, walked up behind four young girls and stabbed each of them. They are expected, though, to recover from those injuries. Revisa then left the theater and went to a McDonald's in Plymouth. Police say he stabbed an employee through the drive through window, then went inside and stabbed another employee. Revisa will be in court for arraignment in that Plymouth incident today. But right now, Plymouth is the only agency to press charges for the incidents. One man says he often stops at that McDonald's on the way to the beach and just can't believe this happened. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, makes you appreciate life, but also, you know, the safety of the employees as well in such a busy intersection. Like with the summer around the corner, more and more people are going to be coming. And of course, the big thing that everybody is asking this morning is what was the motive for this stabbing spree? Well, that's something we're still working to find out. Police have not released that information yet. It's still very early to piece together some of that. But as far as the Connecticut, the Deep River situation here, that death that happened at a home just a few miles from where I am now, we are still talking to Connecticut State Police trying to get that information. And as soon as we do, we'll get that out to you. Live in Deep River, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's News Station. All right, Brooke, a lot of important information there. We will see you again at 7 o'clock, 6.06 now on a Tuesday morning. And a Fox 61 follow-up now on the gun violence in Bridgeport. From over the weekend this morning, Governor Ned Lamont, Mayor Joe Gannam, and police holding a news conference to address the shootings. Police responding to five total Saturday night and early Sunday morning, three happening at a housing complex. In addition, a man shot near Reed Elementary School and a woman was shot in the face while driving her car. Police have not arrested any suspects. That news conference with the governor and mayor starting at 930. Police in West Haven investigating after a person was shot at a home on Peck Avenue. The calls came in around 6.30 last night. Peck Avenue near Atwater Street closed for hours here while police investigated. They say the person is expected to survive. Right now, no word on arrests or what led to the shooting. Oh, one man is due in court this morning on charges that he stabbed a man several times at home in Windsor Locks. 30-year-old Birum Henriquez, who has no listed address, allegedly attacked a 29-year-old man at home on Elm Street Sunday night. Now, that man was seriously hurt, but police say he is expected to survive. It's not clear what led up to the stabbing. Henriquez is being held on a $100,000 bond. And a frightening commute for people taking the Metro North train in Waterbury yesterday morning. Transportation officials say a train was delayed after it hit a tree that was lying on the tracks. The crash happened in Milford near Herbert Street. One of the passengers was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. The rest of the passengers were transported by bus so that crews could remove the train from the tracks. It is a new week, and that means new bills are making it to the governor's desk. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst has the rundown of what legislation is now law in Connecticut. Supporters are praising Governor Ned Lamont for signing a bill to expand paid sick leave, saying it will protect low-income workers. Right now, only employees with at least 50 workers or more must provide up to 40 hours of paid sick time every year. Now, that law will gradually expand, covering private sector employers with at least 25 employees in 2025, those with at least 11 employees by 2026, and eventually nearly all businesses with at least one employee in 2027. The bill does exempt seasonal employees and certain union construction workers. The measure also broadens the reasons employees may use the leave to include events like closures due to a public health emergency and quarantines and prohibits businesses from requiring employees to provide documentation to support their reasons for taking time off. While it received support, legislative Republicans say this bill will crush jobs and small businesses. In a statement, Senate Minority Leader Stephen Harding and Ranking Senator on the Labor and Public Employees Committee Rob Sampson said this will hurt employers and employees by eliminating their ability to negotiate employment terms themselves. A measure lawmakers across the aisle both got behind, though, protections for health care workers. Starting October 1st, home health care and aid agencies must collect information from prospective clients like 
like psychiatric history, history of violence, domestic abuse, or substance use, and give it to any employee assigned to that client. It also mandates home health agencies train staff on safety-related issues, conduct monthly safety assessments, and give staff ways to perform safety checks like via phone apps. Agencies and their staff members will also be required to report any verbal threats, abuse, or similar incidents to the State Department of Public Health. Reporting at the Capitol, Emma Wolforst, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Emma, thank you there. Well, a federal court has permanently shut down three local tax preparation businesses. All of them were owned by one man, Juan Carlos Frias. Now you're looking at all of the names of the businesses that he operated. They're on your screen right now. The Justice Department found he understated customers' liabilities and he falsified their business expenses to get them unfair tax credits and deductions. The Fed say Frias had more than 10,000 Connecticut customers between 2017 and 2021. If you were a customer of Frias, expect a federal notice in the mail with more details about what this means for your returns.